The timer is running. Okay, so um, this is a talk uh, about a game I made, um, which I did uh, to learn stuff, um, to uh, drill down into some technology, and um, generally have a bit of fun. Uh, this is the game that I wanted to recreate in a browser. Um, so it's sort of a test of manual dexterity. Um, but with the constraint um, that I was only using HTML and CSS, no JavaScript. Um, so first thing I did, obviously, was made a logo. Um, the game is called The Floor is Java. Um, uh, is lava? Java. Okay. <laughs> the floor is Kotlin? No. Uh, so the idea is that uh, you uh, walk across this bridge to a stepping stone, you click on that and you can walk to the next one, and that bridge is relatively narrow, and this is a super sensitive mouse. Um, and along the way there are um, some objects that you can collect, and you'll see the score is incrementing as we go, and there's a diamond, I'll grab that, up goes the score. Uh, but if you step off oh, in, in the uh, lava and it's game over. Right, so how does this all work? It doesn't work on this page. Um, if you were writing it in JavaScript, you'd have to manage your state, but in CSS, these are the only ways you can manage state. Um, so, for example, you might have a couple of links, you might apply some styling to them um, to position them, colour them, size them, and you'll notice they're overlapping. Um, now, if I add a bit more CSS, then as I move and hover over this element, it, it brings it to the front. So that's how I bring the stepping stones out in front of the lava, by manipulating the z-index. Um, you can also manage state through link targets. So these are links that link to themselves. So the href points to the ID. So um, you might have a bunch of these links on the page. And when I click on a link, so you can't see it there, but the, the hash fragment now points at this one. And so this selector, colon target, now matches this element. So if I click on a different one, this matches this. So at any given time, only one element can have the target state. But you can extend it with the plus selector to select the thing immediately following. So now I can select the one I'm on and the one I'm moving to, and so on. Um, you can also add text content to elements that didn't have it, um, and because it's a pseudo element, you can style it, color it, position it, all that good stuff. I actually didn't want the text, so I just took that out, um, but now the width of that thing is animating. It's currently zero. It's going to animate to 110 pixels when this is the link target. So I click on it, and the bridge extends across to the next element. Um, if I do this, it works again. If I do this, it goes awry. But anyway. <laughs> uh, Checkboxes can have a checked state. Um, and you can use that to manage the content of an otherwise empty uh, element that follows it. Or um, you could style that element to display an image and you could style the checkbox input to be hidden um, and then when you click on this it toggles the checkbox and makes the thing go away. Um, so that's it. Uh, how does the scoring work? You can um, use custom numbering in CSS. You'll notice that these bullet points have come out numbered backwards. So I declared a counter called top three I incremented it each time an li is rendered, and um, then I included that as the text content of a pseudo element beforehand. So that's what's going on on that one. But I could have used a counter um, based on the checked state of one of these. So as they disappear, sorry, 
Sorry, it goes up. And that's almost the end, honestly. Have to move the focus. Um, and there's some links. Um, the one that kind of got me interested in this in the first place was this is a good article on the Guardian website. They have a quiz with a score that doesn't require JavaScript. Um, and then this one, this is just amazing. It's an animated, immersive adventure game where you can scroll around and pull levers and whatnot, and it's CSS only, no JavaScript. It's amazing. Right, that's me.